Thanks for joining me with today's video. Today we're going to be exploring virtual local area networks or VLANs and how to set them up on this TP-Link manage switch. Hope you enjoy it. Let's jump in. This is the TP-Link TL SG108PE. It's a power over Ethernet managed switch by TP-Link. Today I'm going to show you how you can configure VLAN, Virtual Local Area Network, and how that all works. So, so as you can see, on my firewall of gold, SE, I have configured a VLAN with a tag of 6. This is the identifier. It's an important function of VLAN, because this is the identifier that separates each virtual local area network. Six I've given the name of KL Devices VLAN, Keith Lewis Devices, that's myself. And on this you'll see my TV, my phones, anything that I connect over Wi-Fi or wired will go into this because I've set it to, to do so. It's important that we do this on the router or your firewall first to make sure this is configured and set up on this end. On the firewall I've set this up on port three, which is the connection that runs from my garage upstairs to this switch. Let's figure out where these ports are. Port 4 on the Firewall Gold SE is connected to the internet via my ONT. Port 3 on the Firewall Gold is connected to port 8, so if we go over the uh, switch port 8, that's where the internet goes into the PoE switch. Now port 1 on the PoE switch goes to the Ubiquity access point. Port 2 goes to my TV. Port 6 goes to my Razer laptop. And all these devices are connected to each other inside the virtual LAN, which is KL devices, which is virtual LAN 6. And if we go back to Firewaller, we'll see that the IP address they all share will start off in the range of 192.168.175. They all point to my DNS server, which is not on the same VLAN, but runs on my primary home server. So now we need to set that up on the TP-Link. Now it's already done for me at this point, but I'm going to show you what each of these things mean. On the 802.1Q VLAN configuration page, you must enable that option in this switch and then apply. If you don't do that, nothing we do here is going to work. So now we need to set up the 802.1Q VLAN configuration. In the top left, you're going to want to specify your VLAN identification. In my case, that's 6. And then you want to give it a name. You've got to remember that the way we configure our VLAN depends on if devices understand or do not understand VLANs. For example, port 1 is connecting my Ubiquity access point to the switch. Ubiquity access points understand VLANs. They know what they are and they can tag traffic as well via the Unify controller. So we're going to tag the Ubiquity access point on port 1. Port 2, I have my LG TV. It does not have a concept of what VLANs are because it's not a, a network layer switch, it's not a router, it, it just doesn't under, it doesn't have the capabilities to understand that. So we're going to make sure it is still a member of VLAN 6, because we're going to, instead of leaving it as not a member, we can't tag it, but we need it to be a member, so we're going to leave it as untagged by selecting that box. Port 6 has got my Razer laptop on it. Again, the Razer laptop does not have a conception, the network... Hardware doesn't understand and cannot send VLAN tags. We must still tag it somehow. We cannot leave it in the not membered area, so we're going to pop this into untagged. And finally, on port 8, this is where the switch connects back downstairs to the firewaller. The firewaller does understand VLAN traffic, and therefore we tag it. So do you understand that concept? 
untagged traffic does not have a concept of VLANs and tagged traffic does. Once you've completed that configuration and you've select untagged all the devices that you want in the VLAN that do not have an understanding and cannot generate their own tags, you'll put on the untagged. The ones that can, your access points if they can, and your router and firewall if they can, you'll put as tagged. Click Add and Modify. At the bottom then you'll see your VLAN, its name, the member ports, 1, 2, 6 and 8, what's tagged, what's untagged. The next step on the left hand side of the screen in TP-Link's uh, management interface is the PVID setting. That's a real crucial step we need to employ here because as we said earlier, port 2 with the TV is, it doesn't have a concept of VLANs. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the box on port 2. The same for the laptop, it doesn't have a concept of VLANs, we're going to check the box here. In the PVID box, you're going to put a number 6 if that's your VLAN number that you're going to use. Then you're going to click apply. And when that's done, you will see that port 2 and port 6 are now on VLAN PVID 6. What this does is it forces the traffic that come through those ports and tags them by force with a tag of 6. So your router, your firewaller, it will pick up the traffic coming down the line from those two as 6. Because port 8 is in the VLAN and it's tagged, traffic that comes from here due to the PVID setting will be tagged with a 6 and send it back to the firewaller. You will need to give it a few minutes to propagate across your network. You may need to turn those devices off and on again. You may need to do that via restarts, power down, power up, back up. When you do that, and if you've done this in the way that I've suggested, you will find those devices will now accept a new IP address, which in my case, if we go back to Firewaller, back to Firewaller, you'll see that the IP address is showing us 192.168.175 range. And as you can see on the TV, once we've refreshed that, it now also picks up, which confirms to me that the TV is now on the correct VLAN. I hope this video has helped. I know it's quite a confusing subject. I've done the best to explain it myself, and I'm not an expert. But I, I too also had uh, difficulty settings that when I first came around to understanding VLANs. But hopefully that goes some way to helping you understand. Thanks for watching the video.